Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, see what it says? That's my name, Alex. Don't wear it out. And that's the ramble. That's the name of the program. We go till midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. Ladies and gentlemen from Shaker Heights, Ohio, that's Walter Sterling. Hi. Famed broadcaster. Uh, Formerly a radio consultant. I don't know. Do you do consulting anymore? No. That doesn't even exist, that business. Uh, it doesn't exist, but I, I did it for a long time, and I was yeah. done. He's the guy who got me my job at Sirius XM. One of the better decisions. One of the better decisions, yeah. Uh, and uh, I didn't get to meet him till later in life when I was told by somebody where I had just gotten fired that you should call Walter, his last name, well, Walter Sterling, uh, you should call Walter Sterling because he said he really loved your program when he was growing up. I did. And so I called you, and you started giving me advice, and then I came to New York, and I met with the people at Sirius XM, and it didn't exactly happen at that moment, but eventually it did happen. So, you know, uh, it, uh, you know I thank you for that. It was uh, nine of the... Well, that was, that was easy, and uh, the good news is they knew you before... Uh, I introduced you, so there was no introduction yeah. necessary. Yeah. It's just a matter of process. Anyway, uh, well, he is, he, he, needless to say, he's in the radio business. He does radio. a show on Sunday nights on, uh, on uh, uh, what's the network? It doesn't matter because they don't listen for networks. On. No, they, it's distributed by Westwood One. It's on about 70 stations. Yeah. And you can find information about the show at Walter Sterling Show. Oh, okay. dot com. WalterSterlingShow dot com, which will take you to a live live feed of it if you want. Oh, good, good. Anyway, um, uh, we've been talking about uh, coronavirus and, and things like that. But you were talking about growing up listening to a disc jockey who I never heard of uh, called Big Wilson. But you see, radio was so local that, yeah. that these were the people you grew up with, and I in San Francisco would know somebody by who was big in my area that at the time you wouldn't know of you know right because really we were all all the radio people in a in a given town one of the biggest radio people ever uh that i know of was don sherwood huge. in san francisco huge Fifty share huge and you knew about him in in uh in san francisco go to la you never heard of him you know that's the way radio was you know but he was huge Huge. But the other thing about guys like Don Sherwood, which is why they were so huge locally, mm -hmm. is that it could not transfer. You could not take Don and put him in another city and be successful with him because it was 100 percent San Francisco. He mirrored the city perfectly. Yes. Those guys got 50 shares. Those were huge local stars. But every now and then, one of them would make the silly, silly mistake of going to another city or even another station in that city yeah. and it was always a disaster because there was nothing they did that wasn't so integral to that station in that city that yeah. it could be transferred sherwood and, sherwood was offered a tv show nationally out of chicago and he went to chicago he stayed there for i think three days and turned around and came back to san francisco yeah, yeah. there's no way and there were a lot of stories like that Reege cordick in uh, in, in uh, at uh, kdka in pittsburgh did not transfer well. So there are stories like this all over the country. And uh, it's, it's a fascinating phenomenon. Yeah. But I was listening to Big Wilson in New York City in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And he was also on Monitor on the network. Mm -hmm. And he did an amazing call-in talk show middays on WNBC called Hello Big, where he would throw out a dirty subject. Like, have you ever cheated on your husband? Have you ever cheated on your husband with a farm animal? And then people would call in and reveal their secrets. But he was so tight and bright and top 40-ish in his delivery that it moved like an express train. It was great. Anyway, every now and then, he yeah. referred to his son, JJ. He'd mm -hmm. refer to his son, JJ. And like at the holidays, he'd bring in JJ to read commercials on the air. Isn't that cute and wonderful? All right, then uh, 
Big got fired. He went to Miami, successful at WIOD in Miami, and then he passed away. And in the back of my mind, I've always wondered, what happened to J.J.? What happened to J.J.? And I, about a year ago, I started to look for J.J. Wilson. And I'm so stupid, I spelled it J-A-Y, J-A-Y, and nothing came up. And then I typed in letter J, letter J, Wilson, and boom, he's a voiceover talent. He's a voiceover talent in Nashville. I called him up. I told him how much I loved his dad. And now every week on my show, Sterling on Sunday, he does promos and introductions to bits on my show. And um, it's a real kick. I mean, it's a real honor to have Big Wilson's son on my show. Wow. It's pretty cool. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a nice story. It's a very nice story. Uh, but anyway, so, uh, so uh, here, here we are. Uh, do you stay in the house a lot? I am thrilled that with the coronavirus, the rest of the country is adopted to my lifestyle. <laughs> I no longer stand out. I'm really good at staying in the house. I'm happy yeah. to give you any tips. Well, no, but I give you tips. I mean, I've been in this apartment for close to six months, and the only time I ventured out, I ventured out, out once to uh, 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 Mount Sinai to get a checkup for the operation that I had. And then I had to go down to, uh, downtown uh, to Midtown, uh, right near Trump Tower, to go get my uh, my tooth root canal. But outside of that, imagine the only time you've left the house, folks, in six months is to get a root canal. <laughs> you know. What's amazing about dentistry is since our youth, it really has not improved. Not really. I mean, I I do remember the needles as being somewhat larger when they did the Novocaine. Uh, but really, but really, I mean, except no, it has that a, yellow light thing, No, which in I fact, they've taken, they've taken the fun stuff away from us in dentistry. They've taken away the spit sink. Spit sink is a, is a crime. It's satanic. You, you don't like the spit sink or you want I, the spit I, sink? I wanted that. That was the only joy I had. I love to spit there I I, and to see the blood go down as it was well. the only joy I had. Yeah, it was the only fun you had. They did away with the spit sink, and stand now you have an assistant with her sucking thing. Not good. It tears off half of your bottom part of your mouth. I mean, it's just, you know. But outside of that, you're right. Nothing much has changed. I mean, they've come up. Look, the root canal I don't think existed when you and I were growing up. It did. It did? Uh, our, I, parents, our parents would get I them. think when I started dentistry, because you're a bit younger than I am, quite a bit younger than I am. Not much. How old are you now? I am uh, 67. 67. So you're 13 years younger than me, which means you may not have gone to a dentist when uh, when they were still uh, they didn't have root canals. They didn't have they didn't have implants. I don't know. You know. Although you know who invented the implant? Who? I think somebody on a Samoan island somewhere. What they but they did he had is, a lot, if he had a lot going for him, if he was on yeah. a Samoan island, he has a, he had a lot else going. But this for him. was like with tribes; they would take a, a bamboo shoot or something and hammer it into the jaw and then put a fake tooth on it. But their women were topless. That's right. But then they all got ugly. Did you ever notice that? I can't comment on. They that. show you a beautiful Samoan woman, just a gorgeous Samoan woman, and you go back and you see her thirty years later, and she's like this. You know. She's on the prices right. Yeah, I hate to be sexist, folks, but those kind of things count with me. Uh, but um, uh, anyway, you know, dentistry has not, outside of the things that are offered, they found more ways to make money. Uh, and also, the dentist was cheaper than a doctor. You remember that too? It was eight bucks for a filling when I was a kid. Uh, I think it was. I think with me it was five bucks, but it was per surface. I think, like that if the, right. if the filling that went, went right. around, then that was two surfaces. But now it's three fifty a filling. Maybe 400? maybe four hundred. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a root canal in Manhattan as one of my parting gifts, and it was four thousand dollars. No, well, mine's mine's three thousand, but with insurance, it'll cost me fifteen hundred. This is a terrible conversation. It is a terrible conversation, uh, 
let's see here. What else can we get to? <laughs> the less terrible conversation. The great thing uh, that I, you know, about you is that you must have found inventive ways of getting along with the coronavirus. Like you're a parent, so you're probably worried for your children, right? Here's what I don't understand about the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Number one, I think it'd be really good if somebody announced we don't know what it is. We don't know how it's transmitted. We don't really know how it's transmitted. We don't really know its progression, its pathology. We're not sure yet. It would be comforting to me if somebody just said, hey, we're, we don't know. The second thing I don't understand, truly don't understand, I don't care who you voted for. Wear the damn mask. What's the big deal? Yes. What is the big deal about putting on a paper mask whenever you go outside and then using hand lotion, which can actually smell good if you get the right scent? Yeah. What's the big deal? How did that become an issue? Those are the two things I don't understand. With my kids, um, we pay attention to if they're starting to get feverish. But I don't want my eight-year-old to live in fear of that all day, and she does not. Right. So um, we're just aware of it. They're aware of it. The second they come in the house, they wash their hands. But here's the difference. Yeah. Their whole life, whenever they came in the house, their father said, wash your hands. I always told them to wash their hands because it is the easiest and fastest way to cut down on the odds of getting a cold, the flu. And then I have a meta question. With all of these preventive measures measures for the coronavirus, shouldn't this mean a massive cut down on colds and regular flu this season? Mm -hmm. It should. It should. Yeah. Uh, we're going tomorrow to get our flu shot. You know. Good idea. The, well, the good idea for getting a flu shot is if you get the flu shot, then you're not going to get that flu. So if you do have corona, you know you've got it. You know. And unlike you, I am in all risk categories. All of them. Really? Yeah, I have diabetes. So I'm in all risk categories. And um, well, I'm in one risk category, two risk categories. I'm in the uh, old fart category, and I'm in the, uh, the cancer category. But it, my cancer isn't isn't really that profound, okay? So, but that's like saying high class strip club. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's an oxymoron, not yeah. profound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I mean, uh, you know, you're right, and we don't know a lot about it. I'll tell you who doesn't know a lot about it, but figured out how to fight it, is our governor here in New York, Andrew Cuomo, who is not getting enough credit. For all that we've done in New York City, do you know how many people, a couple of days ago, do you know how many people died in New York in th for three straight days, New York City? How many? Zero. In the what days? It, for three straight days, zero people died in New York City. In the state, yesterday we had 10, the day before we had five. It goes back and forth in, in that area. Our infection rate is down to 0.85. Okay. Now, the problem was solved in Ohio. Mm -hmm. There have been no new cases in the state of Ohio for over a month. Yeah. And the reason that happened is because the governor announced no more tests. Do you he said, know, we're, we're not going to do any more tests. It, you know, this idea that if you don't do tests, you won't see a lot of cases is wrong. Because what it's happened totally is wrong. We, had the most, we had the most tests we've ever done in New York State the other day. 85,000 in one day. Wow. Out of that, the percentage of people who had it was 0.85. And, now, they, showed, and the they showed a graph of the amount of tests went up, but the amount of people getting it and being infected went down. So that idea that the more testing, the higher your rate goes up is ridiculous. It's only in states where the infection rate is high. Now let me say something else about the mm -hmm. governor that is mm -hmm. uh, that is sexist and horrible. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. He has a hot daughter. He has a hot daughter. Yeah, well, it's, she it's, should do all the press conferences. We don't need to see him. Yeah, well, I, I went to a, the Republican convention once with my producer, Albert Reynoso, and we sat there and looked at everybody and went, why do these Republican women have to be so hot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Now, let me tell you the downside of Governor Cuomo's wacky plans. Yeah. Here's the downside. My daughter, Mm -hmm. who's 17, just entered Syracuse University as a freshman. Mm -hmm. In order to enter Syracuse University from not New York, Mm -hmm. from like 20 states on the list, she had to be quarantined. Yeah. That meant that she had to go to the school 14 days before her classes start. And not leave. It's worse. She had to be tested before she came in and proved negative, and it had to be submitted to the Syracuse University Health Department portal. Mm -hmm. Then once she got there, they had to test her again. Mm -hmm. Then once she gets there, she goes to her dormitory. Once she's at her dormitory, one parent can take her to her room with all that stuff. And the parent can stay for two hours. Now, the first time you went to camp, away from home, Mm -hmm. college, high school, whatever it was, the first week you're away from home for a week is terrifying and heartbreaking. So there's my baby, homesick as hell, trapped in a not air-conditioned dormitory on the 11th floor, not able to order in food, and she's been tested negative not be able to order in food and uh, not be able to go out except for, see if this sounds like anything, only able to go outside for two hours a day. Does that sound like any other institution? Uh, it sounds like a prison. Exactly. <laughs> and so, well, you look, look, listen, let me finish. Yeah. Let me finish. Yeah, okay. I haven't even gone through half of it, but okay, I'll end we've it run with out this. of time, but keep, keep going. Cause I no, don't, but care. I'll end it with this. People should hear this. So one week into her two week quarantine, the governor announces, Oh, Ohio's okay. (laughs) What do you mean Ohio's okay? And then I send a note to the school. I'm saying, well, the governor says Ohio's okay. The quarantine for her should end. And they go, well, we think just to be safe in case they put it back on the list. I'm like, what? So there you go. Wow. Wow. Well, I think that, uh, I think he's done a terrific job. I think this whole quarantine thing is important because we've done a good job of cleaning ourselves up. All right? Plain and simple. And to have that screwed up by people coming in from other states that are infected, eh. But, you know, I think that that was a little draconian, what they did to your daughter. That, I think, is, yeah. you know, is ridiculous. But, hey, we're li- living in the time of corona. Hey, listen, let's do this again, okay? Thank you, Mr. Alex. It's, I oh. have a lot of respect for the technology you have built here. This is quite a show. Yeah, well, we try. Ladies and gentlemen, Walter Sterling can be heard on your local radio Sunday nights at uh, 10 o'clock Eastern, uh, live uh, from his laundry room where he's now talking to us. Thank you, Walter. Thanks, Alex. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. How are you? Good to see you. Uh, I, I can't see you, but you can see me, I guess. I think. I, 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 uh, it appears so. And uh, our, uh, we're going to open up our Zoom uh, p- p- lines here. Uh, and we're going to be joined by anybody who wants to, uh, wants to join us. Um, I'm just, I just told one person to join us. Okay, there we go go all righty and let me uh let me um, put him here there we go hello charlie how are you charlie wallace ladies and gentlemen deep in the heart of texas very deep very deep how how deep is it oh i don't know so deep that well anyway uh yeah so uh how's your how's your health doing pretty good yeah uh you're in um you're, you live you don't you live in um, uh, Austin is it yes yeah okay uh, and uh, how is everything there because that that's a uh, that's a college town yep University of Texas so you having trouble with people partying like crazy or um well been a lot of infections at UT mm-hmm so I don't know if they're they're still doing uh in classes now, I think they, they may have gone back to, uh, you know, yeah. remote learning. Yeah. Uh, we've been joined also by uh, Robert Natali and also, uh, let's see here, Todd. Are you there, Todd? 
Yes, I am. Yeah, Todd, are you in your truck? Yes, you looks like you're in your truck. Yes, I am. Yep, he's in a truck as well. And uh, let me see, is anybody else calling? No, not yet. Okay, so we'll just wait for other people to join us as well. How's everything where you are, Robert? You're over there in New Jersey, right? Doing well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Everything's doing pretty well. Yeah. Uh, did you uh, did you see our great president go out to uh, soothe the people uh, in uh, where was it now again? <laughs> I keep forgetting. Kenosha, Kenosha, Kenosha. Wisconsin. Yeah. yeah, that that was just absolutely smack my head kind of stuff. It smacked your head. Yeah, I mean, just listening to him talk about the fact that the guy had to defend himself or he'd have been killed is it just was remarkable. Did he say that? I didn't. He I, said uh, that. You know, yeah. I I wasn't following it that closely today because it would it was just what I saw was getting me so mad that I just couldn't continue with it. I mean, to begin with, he's holding this this group sp thing. Uh, with a big round table and people on the side, and except for two people, all of them were white. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And all kissing his ass. And all kissing his ass. Uh, some guy who had a photo store for 120 years, and or 150, I don't know how many years they say, 120 years, something like that, this Photoshop has been there, and it got burned to the ground, which is not a bad idea, because who's taking photos anymore? Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> Brian Sigmund. It it looks kind of like. Hello, Brian. Where are you calling from? Brian, where are you calling from? Are you going to talk to us, Brian? Oh, Alex. How yeah. you doing? Yeah. Right. Good. I'm I'm calling from the bathtub. I. That's what I figured. I I, I was going to say. What are you taking a bath right now? Yeah. I'm taking a bath, and I saw your cabinet thing pop up, and I said I click on it. Yeah. Say hi to you. Yeah. And yeah. Been, where I, you? Where I, you? Been to Alex, and, you know, uh, we used to send you jingles back in your serious left days, and you used to play them on the radio. We felt like rock stars back then. Oh, really? I remember that. Uh, yeah. You, you, uh, yeah. You were called the Feel Goods, right? No. The feel Goods. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And you used to send jingles. God bless. I'm so glad you're. I'm so glad you're still at it, brother. Well, you know, what else have I got to do? You know, so uh, uh, what? What? Why did you decide to call from the bathtub? And please don't stand up, or I've got problems. <laughs> uh, well, you popped up. It was like an alert, and I got oh, and I just clicked on it, and there you were. Wow. I, I was in a bathtub looking for new work trucks. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, what, what, what are you still doing jingles and stuff, or doing music? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I still write music. I play in an oldies group. I play in a Civil War reenactment group. I, I do all kinds of stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I'm an HVAC guy. That's what I do by trade, you know. So I go around fixing air conditioners and stuff like that. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Very nice. Meet the rest of the panel. There's Charlie Wallace, and there's... Uh, Robert Natali and there's Todd. Todd's in a uh, in a truck. Where's your truck tonight, Todd? Outside Chicago. Outside Chicago. Right. And where is your truck going? Going down to Dallas, Texas. Wow. Okay. And uh, where where do you actually call home? Where do you park that truck when you're when you're home? Well, I go and stop by see my dad in uh, Virginia. He lives in Chesterfield. Mm -hmm. He left New York a while back, so he stays there. Yeah. That's where my stuff's at, but, you know. Yeah. I stay in the truck. Yeah. Oh, of course you stay in the truck. But oh, I got a new friend. I got a new friend I want you guys to meet. Oh, really? A new friend. Okay. All right. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, here comes uh, here comes John Larkin and uh, Jeff Stein is uh, coming on board with us here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, let me see here. Where, 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 where you wanted to show? Oh, a dog! Oh, wow. Okay. Stop <laughs> it. Is that a new act? Is is 
Is that a new acquisition, or has that your, been your pet for a while? Oh, that's my buddy right here. Yeah. Uh, and, there you go. Okay. Uh, and is that's he, my buddy. Is yeah, he, it's an Australian Shepherd. Is he a puppy still? He's a puppy. Yes. So how old is he? Uh, six, six months. Okay, and you've had him how long? Uh... Five months. Five months. Okay, so you've had him for five most of the time. Five or four. Five or four. He looks adorable. Yeah. He looks so. got those eyes on her. That really? just makes, just, just focuses right on you. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Well, that's terrific. And hello to, uh, hello to John Larkin, who's got the name Fred Smirts there. You, you never put up your normal name, do you, John? Nope. No, yeah. I so, don't. I don't want the AI jacking yeah. me down. So Brian is in his bathtub. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm about to shave. You're about to. Okay, well, let's do it. I mean, you know, but just don't yeah. don't stand up. <laughs> don't stand up. I'm gonna have to be ready to block you if you stand up. Or if you, if you have to at any point stand up, there is a place where you can turn your camera off. You know, there we go. You, see, it, that's what you get on our program, folks. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? So anyway, getting back to the president, what did he say now? You're saying that the, the, well, the officer was only protecting himself? Not the officer, no. no. The, uh, the kid that shot the two protesters. Oh, he oh. was going to be killed. You know, there's yeah. no doubt that he was going to be killed. And so he was defending himself. Uh, wait, yeah, a minute, no. wait a minute. Wait uh, a minute. Let me let me get this straight. A yeah. president of the United States is entering into a criminal charge with his own opinion of what went on. Yep. You've done pretty well so far. This is unheard of. Of course. It's unheard of. Yes, Jeff. Jeff, you don't have your mic on. You don't have your mic on. Oh, I do not. Now you do, yeah. The guy also has a military-type machine gun. Yeah. 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 Uh, and so it, happens to have. How can that be self-defense when... You, you know, yeah. something chasing you with a skateboard, and you got a fucking AK-15. Yeah. <laughs> he shot the guy. You know, he shot that one guy like five times or something. I don't know. It's insane. This president is really starting to try and make a case for uh, uh, that everybody in the world is out to get his people. Yeah. You know, and I don't know. He's a victim. How do you feel about all this, Todd? Have you been following it at all? I've been watching every bit of it. Uh, it was an AR-15. He shot a bunch of people. Uh, the one with the skateboard, I think, popped him uh, once or twice. Of course, one was a headshot. Um, the other individual, um, I mean, he killed two and he wounded one with the with the little handgun he had. Um First of all, I don't see how it would be considered a self-defense if you come into a, a peaceful, supposedly, supposedly a peaceful rally mm -hmm. with an AR-15, mm -hmm. and you're, you're pretty much asking for trouble. Yep. So regardless if the people was going after him or nothing, he still had the upper hand. He had an AR-15. One had a skateboard. One had a little pea shooter. Looked like a little small pistol. Yeah. So... Yeah. Well, I mean, I just, what I can't, what I find unfathomable is that this guy, our supposed president, uh, is sitting there defending a situation he isn't even intimately involved with. He right. doesn't know what exactly went on. He doesn't know exactly what the police have on this guy and why they're... But he knows the shooter's white, so he's got to be innocent. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but I... Alec! Yeah. He hears things. 
<laughs> he, he hears things. I mean, that you know, yeah. that's what he's talking about. Yeah. He has all this plausible deniability because he sits there and he goes, yeah, I'm, some people say. Some people say. So he just, I, I don't know, he's an asshole. Yeah, well, of course we know that. That's a given. But, I mean, I just... Uh, a, a president always has to be very careful about commenting on some kind of criminal event or some kind of arrest that was made because he can affect that case. And, um, uh, well, in this case, uh, I don't, you know, if, in, if, if the president were putting down somebody, they could make the case that it was prejudiced by the president. What can they make? Who can make a claim here? Uh, I mean, this president is absolutely insane and so frustrated that he's not going to win this election that he's pulling out all the stops to strike fear into the hearts of Americans. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, Alex. Yeah. I, I think that I personally, I think there's always going to be people in this world like Trump. Hell, there was people in this world like Hitler, mm -hmm. and. I'm not even comparing Trump with Hitler. He's nowhere close. But this is an indictment on the American voter. I, he's a symptom to the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, Trump will get up there and he'll say anything and they'll make excuses for him. If, tr if Trump had gotten up and said, I condemn what this child has done, you know, you don't put yourself in bad situations and expect good to come out of it. Mm -hmm. every, every Republican voter in this country would have said, Oh, yeah. And they would have backed him up because he can't do no wrong. So he's really just a symptom to the problem. There will always be a Trump to replace another Trump. You know, that's the hard part. It's the people we love. It's my brother. It's the, it's the people I love and respect. Some of my customers are some of the sweetest, kindest, shirt off your back people I know. They're Trump people. And, and that's what we, we actually... Believe it or not, when we sit here and we bitch and we bitch and we bitch about Trump, I think we're ignoring the fact that there's a sickness amongst ourselves. That's just my opinion. Well, I, I, I tend to agree with you on that. Uh, uh, we have one guy here, American Patriot, who said the kid killed two white protesters who tried to take his gun. Not quite. I no, don't the first think one didn't try and take his gun. What the second one did because he had shot the yeah, first one. Yeah, because he had already shot the first one. Yeah. Okay. Right. So American Patriot, I'm uh, I'm putting you in timeout because you. Uh, uh, let me see here. Put user in timeout. There we go. Because you just uh, put a mistruth up on my uh, on the chat. I hate to be a Nazi about this, but you know. Um, Yesterday I did one of the uh, one of the Monday shows that we do. Robert was there. Robert was at the nicest bunch of people in one place. I mean, it was just very nice and calm and cool. And I if, wasn't there actually. Oh, but you I weren't did there. Why the did show. I? Why did I think you were there? I I, I do Mondays mostly. But yeah, I, yeah. I wasn't yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, but, but it yeah. is a nice group. It's a great, great it's a great, great group, group, you know, and, and this is a great group of people. I mean, these are people who are very respectful um, of everybody else as they talk. And um, uh, but I I just, you know, it just bothers me greatly that we have. Do you think this guy is there's a chance he's going to win? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, Marjorie today was saying to me, I think he's going to win. No. Did you okay. see the uh, the latest polls in all the swing states? No. He's down by yeah. like 10 points in Arizona, Michigan, Wisconsin, Colorado. If yeah. he loses those four, he can't win no matter what. He has no path. <laughs> he, he has no path to winning? No. Yeah, if he loses That's those four feeling. states, he could still win Texas and Florida and Pennsylvania. Yeah. But, and, he can, and that's it. Because all the other states, you know, you know who's going to win those. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, it it's just uh, amazing that anybody would even go along with this guy. I mean, I, the oh, kind yeah. of insanity and the kind of... What I hate is is what he attributes to, uh, to, to uh, Biden. When he says 
you vote for Biden and you're going to get rioting in the streets. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait a minute. He's president right now. And what do we have? <laughs> rioting in the streets. So where yeah. where does this come from? I don't have, have any idea of, of how he manages to divert the blame from himself about this stuff happening on his watch. Hello, Patrick. Hello, Brian. Happy. You keep saying, if I'm president, if I'm president, he is president. So. Yeah, if I'm elected yeah. president again, you know. Did you see that interview with Laura Ingram? Yeah. Man, he, he was nuts. He's just spooning off shit out of the. I mean, completely bonkers. Yeah, wait a minute. Was, now, watch this. Brian uh, Sigmund is trying to get out of the shower without showing no. private parts. Well, that's why I put it like that. Yeah, good for you. Thank you. I we appreciate. Well, it. if you want to see my pecker, I'll put no, it like no, that. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Don't, don't do that, please, please. Okay, he's got to point it up now at the uh, top of the shower, uh, and uh, he's probably putting on some kind of wrap. Uh, one hopes. One hopes. You can also turn the camera off. While you're doing that, if you want to, Brian. No, I'm on a Zoom. Uh, what? Yeah, but you can you can actually uh, uh, cut your picture out there if you want to. Yeah. Um, you know. Um, There's a stop video button. Yeah, I, I can stop his video. I like See, about. It's uh, like that. I'll, I'll just have it ready in case I need it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there, Charlene. Yeah, Oh, you really won't get monetized, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Charlie, Charlie, you got a tight cut there, man. Right. I know. I finally got a yeah, bought a pair of clippers and cut it myself. Yeah. Man, good job. I see uh, that afro. Marjorie did afro mine going. yesterday. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it got tickling my ears, so I had to cut it. it, it uh, yeah, well, I mean, after a while, you go nuts with it. What did you yeah. do, get one of those uh, $79 clippers? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got it on Amazon. Yeah, how did you do that though? How did you sh shave it? it just really you have these little little uh, things in it that that, that come in Clipper different cards. You can have it, you know, a quarter inch and eighth of an inch. Right, but you still got you inch. still got to look and see if you got it all. I guess you just use a mirror, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's called the clipper guard. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, yeah. luckily, I have Marjorie. Who does it for me? And she can tell. And she's getting very good at it. If anybody, if you need a haircut, Patrick, just come on to New York. And, she's a hairdresser. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we'll get one. How you doing, well, Patrick? I never, a, I never pay for a haircut again. Now you got a you got a uh, visit from the president today, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Did that thrill you? I think it was a good thing he was here. Why do you think it was a good thing? Because we have a governor who has basically ignored everything that was going on for the last several weeks. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, Trump has taken more of an interest in the situation in our state than our own governor. So Trump caused it. You, you say Trump caused it? Uh, John, yeah, I do. Uh, 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 John yeah, Larkin? of course. He's caused the whole, all of this. I mean, if, if he wasn't president, we wouldn't be having all this turmoil. Of course. Well, you know something? We have to we have to attribute some of it to just people. He ginned it up, right, Alex? But he ginned yeah. it up. Yeah. He set the whole thing up from when he got elected. You know, yeah. I mean... Um, I think to say that there's rioting in the streets, and then, I mean, what, what, what? let me just ask you this, Patrick. What was going to Wisconsin going to do to solve the problem? Because it had already been solved. There, there hasn't been any rioting in the last, what, couple of days now. That's, that's a thing of the past. That was like one night. No, it wasn't. I haven't called into the show, Alex, mm -hmm. for the very reason that there's a lot of... Go ahead. Say I'll, just, I'll just keep my mouth shut. No, I'll don't... Get, to begin with, don't keep your mouth shut because we do respect you, you know? We, we, we admire your 
your opinion, even though we may not agree with it, okay? So don't feel reluctant to say what you feel, Patrick. And obviously there's some visceral feeling you have about this. Yeah, so we'll just move on. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, you know, you know what I'm saying, Patrick. You know, I we we, we like we. I don't agree with necessarily everything you say, but I like the way you say it. Okay. Uh, yes, Charlie. Yeah, Patrick. You don't have a problem with a. a 17-year-old bringing an illegal automatic weapon or semi-automatic weapon into your state and stirring up problems? Well, that's a, that is a separate issue. That, I have a problem with a minor coming across the border with any weapon because, one, if they're legal under the age of 18 to possess a weapon, and you're going into a hostile area on top of it. So, yes, I, that I have a very strong opinion that I agree with you on that that should have never happened. However, the kid was defending himself. He put himself into a situation, but he was then attacked. So, unfortunately, he used deadly force. Now, it all could have been avoided if his mom did not take him across the border. So, I mean, there, there's a lot more layers to this than everybody just shooting their mouth off. And, that, you know, it's it, too much for me to want to get into. Mm -hmm. So, yes, Charlie, I agree with you on that. Okay. That's why we respect you, Patrick. Dude, that's why we respect you. You know, there's a certain restraint in everything that you say, but we know where you stand. Okay. Hello, Kevin. How are you this evening? All right. How are you? How did you feel about the president going to Wisconsin today? You know, I didn't pay much attention to it because I'm getting thoroughly disgusted with the whole thing. Mm hmm. It's Everything. It's it's I'm, I'm slowly. That is. I don't know. This whole. The, uh, the, the bickering back and forth. The bullshit back and forth. I, I don't know. I'm just getting more and more thoroughly disgusted with both sides. You know? Mm -hmm. I, it's. You know, the Democrats are a bunch of liars and they want to burn down the, the, the country, and the Republicans are a bunch of liars and they want to burn down the country. and everybody's a bunch of liars and they want to burn down the country and, and nobody, <laughs> you know it, it's 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 insane right now it's and it's going to get worse and worse and worse until this fucking election is over with and i don't know where it's going to go after it's over and it, it, it it's really it's kind of disgusting me let me ask you this and i'll put this as a general question to the group here how much does the reaction of what's happening right now to everything around us have to also do with the COVID existing? Is the COVID no, a factor at all here? I, I think mean, it's another one of what you're talking about. I think it's another excuse. Just yeah. like calling Amazon, it's another excuse. <laughs> calling Amazon, right. You know, it's because of the COVID. You know, I, I don't know that that's all of it. But, I, I mean, it's we... A lot of, it's a lot of the rhetoric that's going on. There seems to be a a mood in the country that is just... I, I don't know how... It's terrible. It's just <laughs> terrible. You know? Uh, and and what do we do to, to, to slow it down? It, I would say it's kind of up to us, isn't it? I think so, but where, yeah. where, yeah. you know, you got Trump saying that, you know, Portland's been burning for decades. <laughs> it hasn't That's been burning said. for decades. No, no. And it, it's, yeah, I don't know. Well, I also said those sides. truckers were, were not violent when they came swinging in the Portland, you know, pepper spraying all the people just standing there doing nothing. Yeah. That I mean, wasn't violent, according to Trump. It's both sides, you know. It, it, I, I don't know. I don't know. You can't tell who's doing what anymore. Yeah. Um, um, 
Did, uh, did, do you want to say something, Charlene? You had your hand up. Well, you know, I hope I'm not getting off topic or anything, but mm. I heard uh, today, very rarely do I ever um, have anybody mention politics where I am in Central. I know Robert is from, um, I don't know what county in New Jersey. I wonder if he's heard this, that our governor here, um, what's his name again? Uh, Murphy. Whatever. Murphy. Yeah. Murphy. Murphy, right. Now, he is in trouble, I heard here, that uh, we don't have enough voting machines and that we're going to be in big trouble, that only the handicapped are going to be able to, like, use the machines and that uh, everyone's worried here, they were telling me. A lot of people were mentioning to me, for some odd reason, don't ask me why, They a few people mentioned to me that they're upset that they think that uh, the mail-in ballot ballots, that you should certify them, like, you know, the little green card, mm -hmm. return receipt requested. And uh, I was worried about it myself because, you know, Trump has totally ruined the mail now. A lot of people are telling me that they've mailed things and it hasn't gotten there and stuff. You know, the mail's all screwed up. So that's an issue that some people, just your man in the street, is kind of talking about to me today, mm -hmm. which I thought was odd. But I don't know how Robert feels. Has he heard that in New Jersey that there's a thing going on with the voting machines? that only the handicapped well, will really see. get allowed. I to. think we have a record here tonight uh, because uh, uh, Ryan Sigman, you're from New Jersey, right? You're calling from New Jersey? Yeah, I called the Board of Elections like a couple weeks ago. I'll yeah. tell you what I heard. That's what they told me, the Board of Elections. Right, go ahead. I The Board of Elections said, look, we're waiting for Murphy to put a thing out, blah, 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 blah. And then, boom, they said, okay, we're sending everybody absentee ballots. Anyone who's already read. Oh, no, they said don't vote that way, though, maybe. Or, or what's the other one with the P? I'm sorry, I don't. There's another way to vote. And she said don't vote that way because that's not the way you want to vote. Well, there's absentee you know, and there's. What's the other? In person. Well, mail. No, there's a third one, the other way. And that's how Trump is going to win. You see, but already oh. what, we, what we've got here is a confusing situation. Are you talking yeah. about. Trump calling whatever universal voting? Are you talking about that? Because he, he keeps saying this term that I've never heard before, universal uh, mail-in ballot. Exist. Yeah. yeah. Well, what is that exist. thing when you're at it, you live in another country? There's another well, country. I'm sorry. Well, that's, that's absentee. Oh, that's provisional. absentee. Provisional. Provisional. Don't vote provisional. provisional. That's it, yeah. right. Okay. Well, so yeah. other people have heard that, too, though. There's a big thing in New Jersey that Murphy is in big trouble that he doesn't have enough voting machines or something for everybody and that uh, only the handicapped will be allowed. You have to be really handicapped or something. You have to be certified disabled to use the voting machines or something. So it's not just me. Other people have been hearing this, too. Right? Well, now my question is, I know, that, for instance, here in New York State, we can vote mail-in, Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. You can do probably the same thing when it's figured out in New Jersey. I'm sure you can do it, right, Jeff, where you are up in Connecticut? Yeah, your mic's off. Uh. Just shake your head. I said uh, a couple of days uh, we're going to go in to find out. Yeah, because uh, my feeling is is that I, I, what I want to ask is the people here, how many feel confident with mail-in voting? I mean, considering all the uh, 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 wrench that's been thrown into the works on this. Do you all feel safe? Do you feel safe, Robert? Yes. I'm fine. Okay. I'm sending it return receipt, Alex. I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> or call the, there's going to be a drop-off place, they said, like you call yeah. the Board of Election. And there's a place where you can go hand it into the Board of Election, they said, yeah. to make sure. Well, you know That's what they what should do? do? What they should do is they should do mail-in, but give you the option to go down to your polling place, not go into the polling place, but have a box outside the polling they place they where do. you can drop it yeah. in. They do. In San Francisco, they do. They do, yeah. they do have yeah, that they in San Francisco? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But can you also That's mail it in as well? Yep. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, and they also have well, a box right outside our county office, so you can drive right up like a mailbox and put it right inside the box without getting out of your car. Well, that's like, what I heard they're going to have here. Yeah. yeah. When, when, when they mail you the ballot, Every if you 
if you show up to the um, voting place on the day of the election and you don't have the ballot that they mailed you, then you got to get a provisional. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Brian? Brian? Yeah. Yeah, you're talking. If you're going to talk to somebody else, just put yourself on mute, then that way it won't interrupt here, okay? God bless. Love you. Yeah. You know, it just you, you haven't done this before, so you don't know what we're talking about. Todd, how are you feeling about everything? You're, you know. Well, all, all, uh, all this? I think everything's a mess. Um, I'm just pretty much, I don't know, just trying not to let it all get me all down or whatever, but um, I'm listening and um, both sides or whatever. And, um, as far as that kid with the gun I mean I don't even know I just I'm just sitting back and listening because I know for a fact if I was the one with a gun running around like that I wouldn't be here having this conversation by the way in your state Patrick are those are those kind of weapons allowed to be brandished in public some states yeah. huh yeah oh, why not? okay well we have open carry so yeah there's there, there, for adults no, yeah. no, yeah. Well, I will. You go. Yeah. Why not? And I'll tell you that in New York City, it would not be allowed. All right. right. No, I, so. I know that. But yeah, the, the state of Wisconsin has open carry, mm -hmm. and we also have concealed carry. So it, it's it's all good. It, it's all good. <laughs> and none of the adults shot anybody. They were open carrying. Yeah. Uh, yes, Charlene. Can Can I ask a kind of dumb question, Alex? Mm-hmm. Did I miss something in Wisconsin? Because that was the state where, is it Jacob Blake in Kenosha? Yeah. They thought he had a knife and they shot him seven times and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Did something new happen now, like a protester got shot and I missed it or oh, something? No, then, yeah, what, what we're talking about is this kid came in from another state. Mm -hmm. With a what AR or whatever I don't know. AR fifteen. AR fifteen. An I, assault weapon. An yeah. assault weapon, and went to one of the demonstrations. And so far as we hear, and I, I you know, I don't, have, I'm not in full uh, possession of the facts of what went on, but what yeah, they say went on either. was that um, somebody, it, what it was, it he shot somebody. And then he somebody shot three people. He shot one person, and then no, they tried three. to take the gun away from him, and he shot the guy dead. They shot two more. They were trying to take the gun. So there were three people who were killed. Right. No, it was, the third one wasn't killed. killed. The one got his arm blown off. Regular people or not? Not cops. Regular people. Well, regular, regular people. people. Regular yeah, people. Yeah, people in the streets. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now can I can I ask another dumb another dumb question? Yeah. Sure. The the original guy, Jacob Blake, is that his name? Yeah. Jacob yeah. Blake. What was he doing that he got shot? Because, I, I, you know, the other guy, George Floyd, was... Uh, all was I know is that what, what I saw on video, and that's all... I'm an eyewitness just like everybody else to this event mm -hmm. because of that video, is that he was... They were trying to... Were they trying to arrest him at the time? Yeah, and he went to his car and went into, was trying to get into his car. And as his he was, kids were in there. Yeah, his and his kids. three kids, I think, were in the back seat. And as he went into the car, I, for they, whatever reason, this one cop started unloading seven rounds into his back. All and right? then he, he was chained to the hospital bed. Oh, wait, but that's, that's later on. That's yeah. later on. But, I mean, so he really didn't do anything. Like well, George they, Floyd. they say he was going for a knife. Okay, let's say for a moment he's the worst guy in the world, okay, mm -hmm. uh, that he's a terrible human being. Let's just assume that for a second for this argument. Let's assume he was going for a knife. Now, to begin with, there are three cops there, and they're tugging on his shirt at the time. If he's going for a knife, why do you shoot him seven times when one back. shot would be enough to put the guy out of commission? Well, as our president so nicely put it, he, he equated it to golfing 
that it was it was clutching up on a on on a making a putt or something. They choked. Oh my god. What what did you say? He uh, choked. He choked. Well, that's one hell of a choke because this guy's going to be, well, in Patrick's situation for the rest of his life, probably. But first, I heard he was okay, right? Did everybody hear that first? He was going to walk, but now they think he's paralyzed. No, no, right? they never thought no, that. Never the first word that came out really? was really because I thought I heard he that was okay. All I've heard is that they don't think he will ever walk again, but they're not saying a hundred percent. Yeah, let me ask really you, Patrick, saying, since you you're an expert on this. When you were told that you'd never, you know, that you weren't able to walk, okay, because of whatever thing they did to your spine, did they say that there was a chance maybe that someday you'd be able to walk? There still is. There still is. Okay. Yeah, so that my spinal cord is not severed. Okay. So could something be done to help you to walk again by reattaching something or it, yeah. There could be anything yeah. an exoskeleton, which I'm sure you've seen. Yeah. Uh, Israel has, has created a number of them. Yeah. And then maybe stem cell research, mm -hmm. you know. So, it, I mean, it, it, yeah, I, I may not be paralyzed when they bury me. Um, then again, I might be. So, you know, it, it depends. Yeah. But uh, um, uh, that, that was... Um you know, so the, what they've said is, is that at least for the time being, he won't be able to walk. They don't know what the prognosis is for the future, but the guy did take seven bullets to the to the back. Uh, I'm surprised the guy's alive. Me too, Alex. I was just yeah. going to say I'm surprised yeah. he's alive, yeah. and I can't wait until he tells the story. But I don't. I don't. You he's know, he's going to tell I, a story, I and I want to hear it. I don't see any it, it, what, excuse for that kind of action on the part of the because police. he really wasn't doing anything like well, no, with it George it, Floyd. let's for a you know, moment they, let's for a moment say he was doing something let's just say mm -hmm. that okay i want to paint a worst case scenario it wasn't even a traffic stop or something it was like no, crazy no, right? but like, what was he doing charlene no, calm down calm down fight. what that was it he was breaking up a fight okay yeah between two women i think right it, whatever like was going on there's no excuse Six for that. Six shots right. in the back. Well, I mean, to me, uh, 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 you know, one shot is enough to stop anybody. Yes, seven is overkill. The seven right. is overkill. Seven is either you choked, <laughs> okay, or you panicked, okay. Either either way, we have to ask some questions about how police handle these situations. And come yeah. on now. I mean, why is it every day? Remember, it used to be school shootings almost every other day or every other month or something. It was a school shooting. Now, why is it these, you know, these kind of shootings every day? Like, it's too well, much. Well, look, look, in, in all honesty, these have been going on forever. Right, because okay. I know a guy. I always but, say that. But I'm they, sorry. nobody ever made a big... guy that got it, shot hold, like that. Please, Charlene, mm -hmm. just calm down, okay? Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, um, the, the fact is these things happen all the time it's just that there's several things we didn't have back then not everyone was armed with a video camera in his pocket yeah. right okay so it wasn't this guy I knew and that. so everything I, I understand this the shooting that happened in Wisconsin by the police there were something like seven videos of it seven or eight videos of it just of that alone. Yes, Charlie. Well, the thing is, first of all, none of the videos I've seen show any any weapon in the guy's hand, much less a knife. Yeah. But just think about that. Here is a guy. The police get called out on a domestic disturbance. Mm -hmm. okay, so here's a guy that they're worried might be going to get a, a weapon. So they shoot him in the back seven times. In the case of the... Uh, the, the protesters, the police are actually called on somebody firing shots and hitting people. So we have a definite shooting. Here's a white guy walking at them with an AR-15, and they don't even stop, much less oh, push okay. Them. As a matter of fact, let him walk past them he had a, and right, go home. Brandishing it. 
He was brandishing the thing, and they didn't even didn't, shoot did, at Weren't him. they? Weren't the police he driving? He was holding up his hands, trying to give up, and they had completely ignored well, him. Wait a minute. On top of that, weren't the police? Weren't people yelling at the police? Stop him! Yeah, he's they were the yelling, guy. But he's the shooter. He's the shooter, and the police ignored them. Oh my god. Yeah. And then oh he, he ended up going home. They didn't arrest yep. him until the next day yeah. at home. Don't forget the water they gave him. Oh, they gave him yeah, water. Yeah, that was before. Oh that was my before. god. I and thought maybe they would have taken. We're coming to help. I, I'm surprised they didn't take him to Burger King and get him a hamburger. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and, and you how, know how I, could they say that's self defense? I mean, that's like having an active shooter, and you go to take him down, and he shoots you. Then they're gonna say, "Well, he was an active shooter, but it was self defense because you were trying to get his gun away from him." Yeah. <sighs> No sense. Yeah, it, 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 you know, and and the thing that bothers me also is, you know, we have to have a certain kind of faith in. Uh, yes, Brian, you have your hand up, right? I put my hand up just out of respect. If you want to finish, finish. No, go ahead. Go ahead. You know, I get to talk. About <clears throat> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Second Amendment guy. I'm a Second Amendment Democrat. Yeah. Peace and love. Okay. Don't hate me. Um, <laughs> but. But I, I will say this. Um, there is a mass confusion of what went on with that thing. Because I got in a debate with a guy who's also a Democrat. And he's looking at it. And he goes, cops did, what, cops did exactly what they had to do on that situation. Now, me, here's what I saw. I think that cop drew his gun too soon. Because there's... If you knew anything about guns, you do not draw a gun unless you intend to use it. So you got this guy who has his gun out, and he's chasing this guy 20 steps around the vehicle with his gun out. He clearly the, he pulled it for compliance. He didn't pull it because he intended to use it. So now the guy's about to get in the vehicle, and he goes and grabs the guy. And there's some kind of a tussle. He's got one hand. Well, the guy's right-handed. He pulled the gun with his right hand. He's the right-handed man. So now he's grabbing the guy with his left hand. He, he has incapacitated himself to, to deal with the situation with both hands because his right hand, because a right-handed man pulls a gun with his right hand, he's incapacitated himself. So now he's grabbing a guy with his left hand and he can't handle the situation. That guy. So and then so this debate that I get in with this guy is he says, oh, the guy said that he had a knife. And that's why the cops that were on the guy got off of him and backed off and then drew. So then I say to myself, wait a minute. If that's true, I see the video. And there's this kind of like huddle onto the guy, and then there's the back off. He said that he had a knife. So then I go, you know, you, you don't sit there and get in a tangle with cops and tell them you have a knife. If that's true, and I look at the, I look at the video and I go, well, wait a minute, that might be true. This guy may have actually said to the cops, I have a knife. At that point, you're just begging for fucking disaster. But so, but they also I, go ahead, Brian. Sorry, no, no. I was just saying. But they also said that he had the one of the cops in a chokehold. How could you have him in a chokehold holding a knife? Also, yeah, I, I didn't the, see. The, any uh, 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 I did uh, not uh, see any chokehold. Well, now, they said that was in the and like Brian, like you were saying, where all the cops were sort of huddled around him. They're all fighting. That's what they're saying. That he had one of the cops in a chokehold. So. I still, yeah, I, I don't know how, and like like you said, when you see that cop have his gun out already coming around the car, mm -hmm. for me, it seemed like they weren't doing whatever process they're supposed to to be able to surround him and make sure he didn't get out of containment, like you said. Instead, they already had their guns drawn. How could they wrestle him back to the ground to fight, you know, to, to contain him instead of letting him walk all the way around? And you see it, the first shot of him when he's in the, the passenger side front corner, that cop already has his gun drawn out going around the corner. Why would you have your gun out already instead of being able to grab him and contain him again? Oh, I, I agree with that 100%. That, that's my whole beef. It's like, I think the, 
the cop made the mistake by pulling the gun too, too soon. soon. Exactly. And he pulled the gun without the intent of using it. Right. And then because he did that, he had his left hand to grab a guy who was trying to climb into a car. Yep. And you can't, like, I'm not going to, I'm right-handed. That cop was right-handed. He pulled the gun with his right hand. I'm not going to stop you from getting in a car with my left hand. You're a grown man. I'm, I, I'm just, you know, so clearly the cop made a mistake. But if you rewind it a little bit and you go, why did these cops all of a sudden go backwards? You know, they were on him like, 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 like flies on shit. And then they went backwards. And I don't know. You listen to right wing news media, they, they'll tell you. Oh, the guy said he had the knife. He listened to the left wing when he said, like, oh, he didn't have nothing. The guy just, he was just strutting towards his car with the kids in there. Like, mm-hmm. there's, there's, there's something that stinks about this whole thing. And it, it's somewhere in between of the cops and him. Uh, I, I, wait a minute. You know, that's, my, that's my take. No on. body cams. No body cams. Yeah, oh, that's what that's I was going to say. Cam. That's why my, my no hand was up. Cam. No body cam, right. Okay. That would answer everything. Yeah. You had your hand up there, Charlie? That's what I was yeah, going to say. It, oh, what, if, if he really had a knife, how come only one cop fired the shot? Why didn't the other cops fire him if he had a damn knife and he was threatening him with the knife? Well, only all, all, I'm, saying, all, all, I'm, all I'm saying is you have three cops, okay? You have one perpetrator. Uh, somehow there's safety in numbers, Okay. And, and even if you had to shoot that gun because you felt your life was in danger, you shoot once. You, and you shoot for a non-lethal area that's going to stop the guy. Uh, but you don't do it seven times. I think that's where people are outraged by this, was the number of times the person shot it. Would you agree with me, Robert, on that, that that's, that's the egregious part of all of this? Is the number of shots that went out? I, I guess. Um, <clears throat> I, 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 I don't know. I come to this whole thing from another place altogether, and that's I don't truly know what happened. I can see what I see on the video, much like you all right. do. Right. My problem with the whole schmear is that every single incident in our country has now become uh, a matter of politics. It's now become left versus right. Everything, everything, everything that's said, everything that's done, everything that happens, everything immediately becomes polarized and immediately you're given your cheat sheet about what it is you're to believe based on who it is that you are supporting in the upcoming election and beyond. (laughs) Well, that part uh, is just... Uh, uh, let me ask uh, uh, Patrick something, though, because you were talking about you were glad that the president uh, went there today. But don't you feel he didn't go there because he really cared about that town or about what went on in that town, but he was trying to make political hay during an election? No, I don't. You don't? Well, I feel he went there because he's the only politician that gave a shit about the fucking state. Our governor didn't give one goddamn shit about it, and no, what he's very useless. And the governor, the reason he didn't want Trump to go there is it would have made him look bad because he's too much of a fucking pussy and an asshole to give a shit. Mm-hmm. So I give Trump a lot of credit for going. Okay, all right. I got to disagree because the governor and the mayor both asked him not to show up. You're, you're just going to inflame the situation. Yep. And uh, if you should defer to the local politicians. The only reason Trump goes there is, you know, for, for, the, uh, for the publicity. You know, that's what Trump uh, Usually in other cases with other presidents, and this includes both Republican and Democrats, I can remember specifically in situations in which there was an explosive atmosphere that they have not gone ahead and 
and uh, 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 gone to those cities at the time that was going on because they didn't want to inflame it. They wanted yeah. it to calm down. Then a week later or so on, they then went there. Uh, I can't remember who did that on one occasion. Uh, and, and I always remember that they always kind of waited for everything to calm down because they didn't want to do anything to make it more incendiary than it already was. You know. Trump didn't have anything sympathetic to say about anybody involved in this whole situation except for Rittenhouse, the shooter. He yeah. didn't say one thing oh, sympathetic to Blake and his family, not one thing sympathetic to the two guys that got killed and their families, and not one thing sympathetic to the guy that got injured. But he had all kinds of nice things to say about... Well, Rick. he's the president of Law and Order, Charlie, so let's say that gets right. Yeah, right. Well, that's plan that's w. just going to inflame the situation. Talk about... That's going to polarize us even more, make the situation worse, <laughs> which is why the governor and mayor did not want his ass anywhere near that town. Yep. <laughs> Well, you know, I have to defer to a certain extent to to, uh, to Patrick because Patrick lives there. This is his, you know, this is his backyard. You know, so he knows knows the atmosphere better than we do. Uh, He's a little biased, though. He huh? hates Democrats. Uh, what? Who? <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> uh, well, no, Patrick, look, Patrick is... He uh, hates the governor. He said that. Well, yeah, but he doesn't love Trump either, you know. Uh, huh? as witnessed by the many times he's been on this program and really never had anything wonderful. This is the nicest thing he said about Trump yeah. in the entire time that Trump's been president. Am I right, Patrick? Probably. Probably, yeah. Well, so, i got to admit that's true. No, I, you know, and I defend Patrick to this extent that this is his backyard, this is his neighborhood, and this is his opinion of what's going on, and certainly... He's far more intimately aware of everything that's going on because if he watches the news at all, you have a lot of local news there. How far away is this town from where you are, Patrick? Uh, maybe 45 minutes. Oh, okay. All right. So it's, it's nearby. It's your neighborhood. It, it, it's halfway between Chicago and Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. But, um, uh, you know, but the question now I would... Put to, to all of you people is what is that fine line between demonstration and political outrage and the demonstration of that political outrage and what is considered not proper? I mean, how loud can you be yelling? You know, I mean, can, it, it is in some cases uh, a certain amount of violence to be expected in a demonstration when things are so heated up? Because, yeah, yeah. Of, you know, uh, for instance, what's going on in, in, Seattle, in uh, uh, Portland is a, is a good example. Uh, what's happening there, uh, the president wants to make seem like it's the worst riot that ever took place. But it's really not. In fact, it was calming down before he sent the uh, uh, the, the, the troops in there to, with uh, uh, to to try and quiet the thing down. Um, so my my question is, I mean, wh where do we find this this line between pe pe peaceful demonstrations and I don't know what I'm trying to say here. Do you know? Do you get what I'm trying to say? I mean. Hello there, Kathleen. How are you? Uh, but I, I, I don't know exactly what I'm trying to say, but I'm trying to say that the president keeps making a big deal about these non-peaceful demonstrations when most of these demonstrations are peaceful. The ones that were going on today in that town were quite peaceful. Uh, y yes, uh, uh, John. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I think we all got to admit these these you know, protests have gotten way out of out of hand, and um, you know all the violence. It yeah. sucks, but I mean, you know, it all starts at the top, and Trump is at the top, and he sets the tone. I mean, how many how many crazy protests that were this violent did we have when Obama was president? None. Even when Bush went into Iraq, there were there were a lot of protests, but it never got violent. Remember uh, the Occupy uh, Wall Street mm -hmm. protest when yeah, uh, 
that there was no violence there. That you know, I mean, it all came because of Trump. Oh. You know, when he when he came in and and he was inaugurated, he went on about how you know we're going to get tough. You know, we're not going to let anybody push us around. <clears throat> You know, yeah. and throw those Stick him over the head. I'll pay his medical bills. That's what yeah. Trump said. Yeah. Set the tone. Yeah. Aren't oh. there people that are inciting though within the protests? I mean, yeah, that no, have anything no, to no. Do? no. Yeah. Other factions that are sent in to make it look like the protesters are violent. Yeah. Well, like, and and some of them, too? it's been found out, have been uh, right wingers. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're trying, paid to the, go the in there and drill it. The guy in Portland yeah. was a right winger. The, the what? The, um, the guy carrying an umbrella that started the riot by breaking the windows of the stores. Yeah. Uh, he was a right winger. <clears throat> yeah. Was- so, I mean, um, it's it's insane. Hello there, Kathleen. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tired of all the bullshit. What bullshit? Amen. We have you no- know, everything. Every. <laughs> Oh yeah, I don't know. I think I think nighttime is the where the line is drawn. Right when nighttime happens, everything goes crazy. Yeah, yeah. You think yeah, they have so? to have curfews all over America, right? Because at uh, night, that's when everything happens now, right? All over the country. Yeah. Uh, did, by the way, did you get a tattoo on your arm there, Kathleen? I've had a tattoo. Oh yeah, you showed oh, that. Yeah. yeah, but you didn't have it when I knew you. No. 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 There wasn't a mark on your body, except maybe the ones nope. I put on there. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> slapping that <laughs> PMI, TMI. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, there I, was no ass slapping. I don't know. I, I, I've just been just terribly unhappy with everything around me. You know, I just don't feel a, a, a sense of uh, of joy at all. Uh, and, and, and I think, you know, part of it has to do with the fact that I've been in this goddamn apartment for six months, Mm. you know, and yeah, I've gone out. I went out for a little walk today and my legs felt really weak because I haven't been exercising them. Um, but you know, I mean, uh, I, I, that's getting to me. Uh, Todd, you know, we are quarantining ourselves by staying in the house okay do you stay in your truck and not get out of that truck on time i get out of the truck is to get groceries or to deal with customers or to pick up loads yeah and walk my dog right otherwise you're, you're stuck in there. how about brian how have, have you been stuck in the house or what have you done how have you been brian sigmund how have you been Living well, I, I do uh, heating and air conditioning for a living. Yeah. So if you were to call me and tell me your air conditioning's broken. Yeah. I walk straight into your house without a problem. Okay. With a, you know, I, I wear a mask. I You have to wear a mask because you just have to. Yeah. For your, um, well, for but, yourself but, and also, I mean. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, you haven't been out of the house much, have you, Robert? No, no, not uh, hardly at all. Uh, how about you, Jeff? You 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 live in the you kind of live in the country, so you can kind of go take a walk down the street. Well, you know? I could take a walk. Uh, I try to stay away from the people. Yeah, uh, because they don't they don't cover themselves anyway. Yeah. But the only way I go around really is I got a bicycle, yeah. and I go on my bike all by myself. And uh, I, I do that, you know, every other day or something like that. Yeah. And, that, and that's about it. It's not too much. Yeah. Well, you know, I said to somebody the other day, what I'm doing, I live in Harlem, you know. And what I do, uh, what I do to, uh, to honor Black Lives Matter is I wear a mask, you know. <laughs> so, uh you know that that's important too. I think that what we do right now is we respect other people, and it shows respect, and it shows us learning a sense of respect for each other. I know we're a very selfish society, but now is no time to be selfish. Wait till this is all over, and then you can all be all me, me, me as much as you want to be. Uh, but 
now is not the time. Uh, and, uh, of course, you go to work, right, Brian? I've seen you at work, you know. Yeah, 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 nonstop. And uh, we we joke about it. We said there'd probably be, you know, a nuclear bomb go off and we'd still be working. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, and, of course, Kevin, you live in kind of a community where you can go out and not have to bump into other people, right? No, we, uh, we bump into each other, but... I'm going out a little bit more now because I'm taking care of my mom and I got to drive yeah. up to take her to doctor appointments and I'm become a official caregiver yeah. of hers now. So I'm uh, hitting more hospitals nowadays, which is a little mm -hmm. weird, but you yeah. got to do it. Yeah. But the thing is that, uh, and, and Kathleen, of course, you and you've been keeping your son in pretty much, haven't you? You know what, the thing I miss is the gym. So once I move, the good thing is, you know, at the house we're moving to, it has a full, um, pretty much all the equipment I'll need to bodybuild. Because once November hits, pretty much four hours a day will be spent bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. But no, you know what, I mean, having to stay inside, like you said, I was the extrovert that desperately wished she was an introvert. So really, with all this staying inside, I really don't mind. But when I do go outside, I do wear a mask. You know, God forbid I should be the one to give someone else yeah. the COVID. You know, I'm not all about that. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's all it's all respect for other human beings. And Absolutely. Other people. And, uh, you know, uh, you're not doing it for yourself. Although, no. I'll tell you, it, it, when that this thing hit hard, hard in New York City and believe it or not but most of the deaths that took place in New York State were in New York City mm -hmm. I was scared shitless I mean I didn't I didn't leave this place for at least two to three months you know and then when I went out I was wearing gloves and when I was came back I was I'd autoclave myself you know <laughs> just to just to make sure I didn't have any of it on me but you had gone through, you know, chemo and everything, Alex, right? I, yeah. I didn't go through chemo, no. Oh, I'm sorry. No, but, yeah. you know, had, you had your treatment, so had, they, you were at higher risk. Treatments right? for prostate cancer, yeah. 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 So, I mean, yeah, but uh, uh, that was not the biggest problem. The biggest problem was, you know, it was just people were dying like <laughs> crazy. Or we lost, we have, uh, we've had 23,000 deaths and I was looking, and of which I think something like 19,000 of them were in New York City. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and that's where I live. So I was, you know. You were in the hotbed of the whole thing, right? We lived a, a life of being pretty frightened about what was going on, you know, and how it was going on. Uh, and, uh, oh, oh, I see. We've actually... Come to the point where we're hi. Oh, look oh, who's there. there she is. <laughs> hey, by the way, let me let me start playing the theme here. Uh, hello there, Adrian. How are you this evening? Thanks for being a guest on our show, Adrian. <laughs> That's the reason we want the world to be great for a kid yeah. like that, you know, and a kid like uh, 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 Kathleen's, you know. We, we do we're doing it for the kids. And I don't have any, but I worry about them. <laughs> anyway. Hey, thank you, Charlie. Appreciate it. Robert, thank you. Todd, always a pleasure to see you. Brian, good first time on the program. Do it again, will you? Uh, 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 John Larkin, thank you so much. Uh, also, thanks to Jeff, to Charlene, to Patrick, to Brian and Adrian, and to... Uh, um, 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 Kevin and to Kathleen. Hey, yes, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, bye bye. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight, uh, and we will stop uh, that citizen panel. Another one will be uh, emerging in a few moments so right after we're through here with Jack Bishop in the intersection he'll be using Skype instead of Zoom so get your Skype ready to go in the meantime uh, we'll be back again uh, tomorrow evening we start off the evening at 8.30 with our sports show with the franchise MC called the Arena 
And then I'll be here again tomorrow night, 10.30, Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And by the way, stay safe out there and be sure to wear a mask. Good night.